so is it a bit awkward that I've been gone? Hopefully not, because I'm back now. <laughs> Listen, 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 okay? We have things going down. I got recommended in by the YouTube algorithm, this stick figure. I have no idea what this video is about. It says obscure obsolete inventions, and I am a curious gopher. Or elf. Shit, I'm not even a gopher. Why did I say that? Anyways, don't worry about that. We'll worry about that later. <laughs> We're going to get straight into things, but hey, before we get started, I really hope you hit that like button. It's right down there. It's kind of weird if you don't hit it. Listen, every YouTuber asks you to do it, and I'm no different. I'm a sheeple, okay? Hit the like button, leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm gods, and also hit the subscribe button for uploads every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay, on top of all that, if you are new to the channel or to the channel, old to the channel, words are hard to say, how this channel works is that you recommend me videos in the comment section as well as video games, but don't post links. Links are cringe. But if you post the title of a video or who it's made by, I'm more than happy to check it out and post a video about it. Even if the video is an hour long, I will dedicate the time to get it done. <laughs> but I look super forward to checking out more videos and more content alongside you guys and to also keep playing some video games. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let's get straight into this one. Also, linked in the description below is the original video, so I hope you show it some love too. I let's get it. All right, so obscure. All right, after adventures. months upon months of unrelenting pressure by you psychopaths pretending to be my characters on Twitter, I finally got a merch store. Let this be a lesson, oh, kids. Cool. With enough harassment, you can achieve anything. Anyway, go check it out or don't, whatever. I was like, that merch is actually super cute. Can we talk about that? It's just like a little stick figure. I love that. An academy. I'm scared hey, I didn't kids. mention. If I learned anything Hello. from my middle school career, it's that what may seem like a good idea initially will often be remembered only as a foolish mistake. Oh. Here's a few pieces of technology from yesteryear that have since fallen into total obscurity. So I've How many of you have used a floppy disk before? I need to know. I need to know in the comments. I need to know. Age yourself quickly. All right? I come from an era of floppy disk usage. All right, in our computer rooms, we had, like, in school, we had floppy disks, and we also played this one game, like, when we finished, like, working on something or typing something. It was, like, this little space typing game that they, like, had a disk for that you would play. Does anyone else remember this? Am I having a fever dream? Am I having a false memory? Does, is this the Mandela effect? Does anybody know what game I'm talking about? Because I don't remember, but it was in space, and you like put your fingers properly on the keyboard, which was what made me a fast typer today. It's all thanks to that one game in that computer lab. Anyways. I've always believed that there's no point in having many small things when you can have one big thing. Ooh. Why have many shrimp when you can have one lobster? Why drink many glasses of milk when you can eat one udder? Why have many cheese its when you can have one cheese them? Pat Uh, are we going to talk about the other thing or no? <laughs> this, we go just let that slide? Aight. Aight, we just eat the cheese thems. Fair okay. enough. And why have many street lights when you can have one moonlight tower? These guys were real popular back in the moonlight 1880s tower? and 90s, often standing at over 150 feet tall and illuminating several blocks from a single point. Not very well, mind you. Matter of fact, they were so dim, we didn't even have the conscience to just call them light towers. Had to go and stick the moon on the front so people didn't get their hopes up. But thanks to our good old friend, oh. the inverse square <laughs> law, you still needed a fuck ton of light to pull this off. So they used incredibly harsh and UV-emitting arc lights instead of incandescent bulbs. All the light of the moon and all the vision damage of the sun? Talk about a win-win. Sadly, these oh, pieces no. have fallen by the wayside over the past century or so. Except for in Austin, apparently. But they use friendlier mercury vapor lamps in them, so they only get half points. Now, anyone who's been I around a baby long- I mean, do you know what, though? Theoretically, like back in the 1800s, you think it would work, right? <laughs> like, I feel like it was a fair try, even if it was dog shit. Just say. <laughs> Long enough knows they always have a cloud of ghoulish stench hovering around them. Jeez Louise, somebody better air out that musty little muskrat before Grandma starts drooping again. You could stick him on the clothesline <laughs> for a while, but knowing that little moron, I'm sure he'd find a way to hurt himself somehow. Introducing oh my God. the baby cage. 
Finally, no. city dwellers all across the nation have a way of unleashing their postnatal funk on the unsuspecting passerby no. below. These were in vogue for a while before falling out of style a bit of the way into the 20th century. Because apparently society started deeming babies more valuable than air conditioners. I don't really get it personally, but... I'm sorry, did people actually put their babies in cages? I... But this is also around the time we started putting lead in gasoline, so it's probably for the best we kept them inside all day. Matter of fact, it's my firm belief that without kids growing up breathing lead, there's no way pet rocks would have taken off in the 70s. <laughs> Dude, it's a phenomena that pet rocks even were a thing. The fact that, like, it, the price escalated the way that it did because of FOMO, like the fear of missing out for kids, is insane. It's a rock. <laughs> like, holy shit. I just, I think sometimes I, like, my naivety, naivety is, like, at a 3,000. Like, I'm just a fetus in the world who is bamboozled by discoveries and shiny objects. I think it's, I mean, also just because English is hard and I tend to be culturally, culturally ignorant to the ways of North America. <laughs> wow, alienating baby boomers. He's so brave and controversial. Now, in the days between the Great War and the not as great but still pretty Iconic. all right war, people were trying to find efficient means of detecting an incoming air attack. They climbed their nation's tallest mountains to seek the wisdom of their greatest elders. And thus, they met the Avatar. And, <laughs> and the wise man said, hmm, big ears. So that's what they did. These what? giant discs what? were known as acoustic mirrors and were designed to focus incoming sound over a five meter diameter into a single point. They were reasonably effective as listening devices. A few of them in Britain were able to pick up the sound of a plane from all the way across the English Channel. Of course, radar came along soon after, rendering these things completely useless beyond looking brutalist as hell. For real. But that's so cool. Okay, so like super fun fact is that um, I talked about this actually in a in a concert breakdown video I did one time discussing about uh, natural acoustics within concert halls because like a lot of concerts get mic'd up naturally but actually the rooms themselves like the the place in which a lot of recordings take place or where ensembles play the walls themselves are intentionally made like concave and architected to, to make so that the audio bounces properly and can fill the room with having similar timing to hit the audience. So I always find it really cool when you see like objects without it having like um, ampl like amplifying effects or without it turning into digital audio that it just takes acoustic audio from structures of super, super cool. Uh, but you know, that's just me, Doug. <laughs> Instant album cover material right here. Ah, one of the pet boys is pulling a Spanish Inquisition on this poor wayward harlot. What huh, the fuck? Just kidding. <laughs> Despite the fact that this looks so very, very much like a state of- This motherfucker wildin'. Can we talk about his monologues he got going on? I'm sorry. I wish every teacher in my school taught me this way. I wish all of them were like, hey, yo, motherfucker, look at this knowledge. Eat it up, eat it up, eat it up, eat it up. Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. <laughs> the art instrument of torture. It's actually just a beauty micrometer. Think those shoe size beauty? measure things at Foot Locker, only instead of one primitive measurement, it records the entire topology of your face and skull at once. With this data, a trained cos- I'm sorry, chin cleftness. The fuck does that mean? Cheekbone height, I get, because like that's what, what conventional beauty is. I get that part. Hold on. I want to read the rest of this shit. Forehead frink... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forehead frinkliness. Frinkliness? Oh, you looking fucking frinkly, bitch. I'm going to tell you what. My God. <laughs> Resting face bitchiness. Oh, my God. <laughs> General dumpiness index is a W. <laughs> Nose length and width. Okay. Cheekbones, ear protuberance. Oh my god. What? I'm like, I want to just start like feeling my face. I want it like, like what's, what's it? Whoa. My tracking is way too accurate. <laughs> That's this very scary moment. I was like, maybe I am. Just a 3D waifu behind a screen. I have three brain cells that fire all at once. And sometimes 
It causes me to have weird dialogues to myself. Anyways. Once. With this data, a trained cosmetologist would be able to pinpoint exactly what features of your head should be enhanced and reduced with makeup in order to achieve a maximum <laughs> calculated... I'm a science, yo, bitch ass, because you ugly as fuck. <laughs> All right, so the science tells me your cheekbones are ass. Contour, bitch. There's no saving you, but we gonna try our damn best. Here's a palette. <laughs> attractiveness after you've paid for their services. Clearly this device must have been effective. After all, beauty is entirely objective. Have y'all watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventures? I need to know because in part four, there's this place called Cinderella, which is like where they like basically this bitch rearranges your face and gives you desirable features. This feels like it was inspired by JoJo's. I don't care about the timeline. All right. I don't care if this was done before JoJo's. Still a JoJo's reference to me, dog. <laughs> what? I have the beholder? <laughs> Check the name tag, buddy. Apparently, the women don't oh, like behold. being strapped into a birdcage and having their every minute flaw meticulously <laughs> laid out in front of them. So this thing never really took off in the end. Next, we have yeah, the fair. Humlauf. This was a device made during World War II designed to let infant- If you tell me that you don't shove that up your ass to clean your asshole, you are a goddamn liar and a whore. There is no way that's not what you do with that shoot around corners. It's like the Germans- Oh, to shoot around corners! Wait, that's so much smarter! I kind of wish I didn't say the previous sentiment now. Wait a second, how does that work trajectory rise if it goes like in a- Wait, the shooter- How does that work? How does the trajectory work if it curves like- Wouldn't the failure rate be really, really high? How does the bear- I don't know enough about guns. Americans, quickly help! Down and watch that part in Tom and Jerry where the conniving rat bends the gun barrel back at his adversary. They said, mein Gott. They came in a variety of angles between 30 <laughs> and 90 degrees. And 90 degrees?! Parent. Holy shit! so you could see what you were shooting at. But as we all come to find out when we reach adolescence, cartoons are the arbiters of deceit because these things would invariably break. Okay, that's first. what I was saying. That's exactly what I was trying to convey, but I'm bad with words and explanations. Imagine being bad with words and explanations of being a YouTuber. Yup, that's me. <laughs> couple hundred shots or so. And even when they did work, the rounds would fucking explode from the massive acceleration, turning a deadly bullet into an ineffectual spray of shrapnel. These were so ineffective that only the 30 degree model ever saw significant production oh. beyond prototypes, and even that was very limited. Say, you ever look at regular mouse traps and go, hmm, not enough property damage. Well, check this out. Not Patented in 1982, damage? it's the revolver mouse trap. No! <gasps> no! Not using blickies for mice. That's insane. Who the fuck using guns for mice? All you need is one snot-nosed kid. I'm just saying, one snot-nosed kid who goes, Ooh, floor cheese! To get his brains blown the fuck out. <laughs> okay, this one's gonna be a little bit darker. This joke's... Should I say this one? We're on Alicia X death. I'm allowed to be edgy, right? Like, is this... Are we in a space where I can... Oh, because I'm going to say the joke. I just need to know if I'm allowed to. All right. Skip ahead like five seconds if you don't want to hear it. Or you have a child who's suicidal. They take the bolt. They take the revolver to shoot themselves in the fucking head. I feel like this is a faulty design for use of guns, right? I feel like this is not the right option we should have. Our gun safety here was not immaculate. That's what I'm going to say. Because of the snail trebuchet and the cockroach claymore. Thanks. I... You know what? I take back the previous sentiment. That is a small-ass revolver. I do not think one could kill themselves with it. Unless you can get creative. Let me know in the comments below how you would... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please don't. Please don't. I already... Like, there's no way this is getting monetized. Okay, listen. I... <laughs> Just don't do that in the comments. I'm sorry. I take it back. So the marvels of the modern era, all those tiresome hours of intense varmint slang can be outsourced to one little gadget on the floor of your kid's varmint playroom. Varmint slang. Now when you hear a gunshot in the middle of the night, you can rest easy knowing that one way or the other, there's one less pest for you to deal with in the That's morning. That's what I was... <gasps> Him and I are the same. I had the exact same thought. <laughs> Boom. 1850. Steam locomotives are all the rage. You're That's in the transport business, but all you can afford is a couple dumb horses. Sure, they move things from point A to point B almost as well at a fraction of the cost, but your cool rail riding friends called you a whack ass and it really hurt your Damn, feelings. Damn, my well, feelings. we got the invention for you. The Impulsoria uses an ingenious system of treadmills to turn that horse to be beckoned into a force to be reckoned with. Sure, it's expensive as hell to make and limits your services entirely to railroads, but just look at it. Instant pussymobile. Slap some rims and a spoiler on that, you're laughing. <laughs> this 
guy's too. I love him. <laughs> it's the pussy mobile. Slap some rims with a spoiler, and then just turn up all the bass, bruh. Hire one one trumpetist, right? One trumpeteer, right? And he just starts. Oh, oh no, a trombone player, and he just starts playing "Freaks" by Savage. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then all the honeys will be yours to slay and salvage. Yes. To the new era of Punani. <laughs> this machine is recorded oh. at having a maximum output of two to four horsepower, which sounds about right. And it didn't see much use outside a couple exhibitions. Now, oh, if there's one hobby that people in the okay, past clear. enjoyed, it's smoking. Who boy, did they like smoking. And with every great wholesome activity comes a million novelty items to go along with it. Oh. Everyone's seen the long cigarette, but how about the really long cigarette? What? The smoke in the rain? Here you go. Going snorkeling? Hey, you know what's more important than oxygen? Nicotine. But hey, wanna know the only- These are actual things? But rain is directional. You're better off just using your hand, right? Like, that's- uh, It's snorkel- <sighs> Nicotine. But hey, wanna know the only thing better than a cigarette? Two cigarettes. You know what? Fuck it. Have the whole pack. You earned it. <laughs> okay, there's gotta be people who did this with joints. I. If I hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel, I will do this with joints. <laughs> I will get straight fucked. All right, that or I'll just eat a bunch of edibles and do a live stream. Up to you guys. If I hit 100,000 subs, it's on you. <laughs> Of course, if you're trying to cut back, you can always share it with a friend. Aww, oh, that's actually heartburn. super cute! I don't promote smoking. It's bad for you. Don't do that. It's cringe. That's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and check out this JPEG. Thanks, Sam Manella! What's this JPEG? I ain't from Delaware, but have you ever had... Uh, if you've, you ain't from Delaware if you've never had this. The fuck? Lucky Charms! What Delaware ass mobile's got to do with Lucky Charms? <laughs> Honestly, I love this channel. The way he presents information, his humor. I like his delivery of his humor too, because some people are like very in your face or chaotic like I am. And like, I guess I'm not really like the screaming, screaming type or anything like that. I'm not like the overreacting kind, but I am like hyperactive. So I love when someone's like calm, but super funny and hits like comedic beats really well. It's just super satisfying to my brain. And I love information. I love knowledge. So learning new shit's always fun to me, especially in bite-sized form because I have a low attention span. Thanks to this current generation of uh, easily accessible media in short dosages. Welcome to my TED Talk. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for being so patient with me here at Elite Sex Death. If you want to see daily uploads of me watching anime, that's right, anime reactions, you can check it over on Alicia X Life, which is my other channel. But otherwise, I hope you stick around this one, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for all your love and support, and don't forget to check out the original video in the comments. I mean, sorry, in the description below. All right, bye! <laughs>